Our story begins with a disgruntled group of assemblers. Day after day, the line fed them the old clevis pin and cotter pin combo, which made their assembly of whatchamacallits a series of frustrating missteps. So, one day on lunch break, the guys elected Earl to talk to the boss and demand change. Today on Engineering Newswire, we're redefining the autonomous car, sending Valkyrie to Mars, and finding the coldest place on Earth. Whew! Big things today. Startup Zoox is planning to replace the car with autonomous technology and creating a new class of mobility known as Level 4, defined by the NHTSA as full self-driving automation. The BAS is not a car but a concept designed to increase thermal, aerodynamic, and acoustic efficiencies by eliminating the front and rear windshields. The move will also impact those who prefer hand gestures over horns when signaling a fellow commuter. With no internal combustion engine, each wheel can be moved to an outer corner with minimal overhangs, maximizing vehicle stability and volume. The symmetrical design allows the vehicle to drive equally well in either direction, making it a perfect solution for curbside pickup, routing and drop-off in urban dense areas. This bi-directionality is made possible by 360 degree machine vision and electric motors that can spin in either direction. Actuated surfaces and adaptive LED lights communicate to drivers and pedestrians the front and rear of the vehicle at any given time. An active spoiler, which reveals a brake light cluster and enhances aerodynamics, will lift depending on the direction the vehicle is traveling. Zooks claims that the freedom from the task of driving brings a significant benefit. Commute time becomes productive time. It also brings us to a new relationship between human and machine. One that, as with all good relationships, must be built on trust. Talking to you, Jacob. Just kidding! So the DARPA Robotics Challenge is kind of a big deal. So big that even NASA's Johnson Space Center has jumped on board. Only, unlike their peers who have been flaunting their robotic prowess, NASA has kept things under wraps. After a vague bit of concept art at the outset of the challenge, JPC has only recently revealed their robot, Valkyrie. And it's a doozy. Aside from the Iron Man aesthetic, Valkyrie is independently powered by a 2 kilowatt hour battery so that it can already walk around without any tethering. The 6 foot 2 inch, 275 pound robot totes 44 degrees of freedom, both LiDAR and point cloud camera systems in the head, sonar and more cameras in its torso, as well as cameras in its forearms and feet. This thing even has cameras on its knees. All of that, and it has modular appendages, meaning the arms have a symmetrical construction and can easily be swapped from side to side in about 15 minutes. NASA saw the DARPA Robotics Challenge as an opportunity to elaborate on technology that they already needed. The team is hoping that Valkyrie, or its next of kin, will make it to Mars and help prepare the planet for human arrival. DARPA plans to break the glass ceiling designs of traditional telescopes with its membrane optical imager for real-time exploitation or more program. With size and cost constraints preventing large-scale imaging satellites to be placed in GEO, Moore is developing technologies that would make optical telescopes much lighter, more transportable, and more cost-effective. The program recently demonstrated a ground-based prototype that incorporated several critical technologies, including new lightweight polymer membrane optics to replace glass mirrors, doubling their efficiency from 30% to 55%. According to DARPA, the membrane is less efficient than glass, which is nearly 90% efficient, but it is also much lighter weight, which enables creating larger lenses that more than make up the difference. The membrane is also substantially lighter than glass. Based on the performance of the prototype, a new system incorporating more optics would come in at roughly one-seventh the weight of a traditional system of the same resolution and mass. As proof of concept, the Moore prototype validates membrane optics as a viable technology for orbital telescopes. See? More is better. Using the Landsat 8, NASA has pinpointed a hot new tourist destination. I mean, who wouldn't want to visit the coldest place on Earth? Bucket list? With Landsat 8, NASA finally had a sensor powerful enough to analyze East Antarctica, where several hollows in this high ridge can dip below negative 92 degrees Celsius. 
Actually, we're just gonna scratch that from the bucket list. Researchers poured over 32 years worth of data and found that temperatures often plummeted to record lows near the ridge between Dome Argus and Dome Fuji, two summits on the ice sheet known as the East Antarctic Plateau. The official record of negative 93.2 degrees C was set on August 10th, 2010. Just full of Jeopardy answers today. The new mark blew away the previous record of negative 89.2 degrees C set in 1983 at a Russian research facility on the icy continent. The researchers used the moderate resolution imaging spectroradiometer instruments on NASA's Terra and Aqua satellites, and the advanced very high resolution radiometer several national oceanic and atmospheric administration satellites use to scan the 620 mile stretch. The instruments picked up thermal radiation emitted from the Earth's surface, even in areas lacking much heat. Lacking heat, it's kind of the understatement of the year. Then they used the higher resolution thermal infrared sensor aboard Landsat 8 to pinpoint the record setting pots. Since it launched February 11, 2013, Landsat 8 has captured 550 images of Earth's land surface every day. Still no photos of my neighbor though. She lays out in the sun. I'll keep checking. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the pd and channel, I'm Chris Fox and this has been your Engineering Newswire. listened to the guys and hired the engineers at Pivot Point to solve the heretofore fastener conundrum. Using mathematical equations beyond the comprehension of most mortals, a device called the Slick Pin was devised. Slick as in self-locking implanted cotter pin. Soon the line was feeding The boss listened to the guys and hired the engineers at Pivot Point to solve the heretofore fastener conundrum. Using mathematical equations beyond the comprehension of most mortals, a device called the Slick Pin was devised. Slick as in self-locking implanted cotter pin.